Go Free or Die, a story about Harriet Tubman by Jerry Ferris. Illustrations by Karen Ritz. Author's note. Harriet Tubman was born in 1820 on a plantation in Maryland. She and the rest of her family were slaves and their master, Edward Brodus, could work them or sell them as he pleased. But Harriet was different from most slaves. She wondered why such things should be. Harriet believed that she had a right to go free or die. This is the story of her struggle for freedom for herself and for her people. Chapter one. It was the middle of the morning. Harriet was walking home across the tobacco fields when she saw her mother, Rit, running after Mr. Brodus. Master, cried Rit as she ran. Please, master, she's only six years old. Harriet began to tremble with fear and her bare feet felt cold on the warm dirt. The empty water buckets she was carrying suddenly seemed as heavy as stones. The dark brown horse stopped in front of Harriet. She looked up past the horse's rolling eyes to Mr. Brodus, who was towering over her. Girl, Mr. Brodus said briskly, I'm sending you off to work for another farmer. Follow me quickly now. No, Harriet cried, seeing the frightened look on her mother's face. I don't want to go away. Mr. Brodus sighed impatiently and tapped Harriet with his riding whip but Harriet couldn't move. She felt as if she'd been planted in the dirt. Mr. Brodus raised his whip again. Suddenly, Harriet dropped the buckets and ran into her mother's arms. Rit held her daughter tight as the whip came down on her own back. Out of the way, Rit, said Mr. Brodus. Leaning down from his horse, he pulled Harriet away from her mother and carried her over to a woman seated in a wagon at the side of the road. Please, master. Rit begged as Mr. Brodus put Harriet on the wagon. Don't take Harriet. She's the third baby you've taken from me. But Mr. Brodus had decided to rent Harriet out to a farmer's wife who was looking for a young slave girl. Brodus watched all the slave children as they grew. He noticed that Harriet carried water to the hot, thirsty slaves working in the fields. He saw that she helped her mother and father who came home exhausted every night long after dark. So when Mrs. Cook came to rent a good worker, Mr. Brodus chose Harriet. As the wagon started off, Harriet could hardly see the dusty road through her tears. Behind her, she heard her mother calling, be strong child and the good Lord will help you. The wagon rattled on, taking Harriet farther and farther away from home. Would she ever see her family again? Harriet bit her lip and stared straight ahead, trying to be strong, but the tears wouldn't stop. Finally, she covered her face with her hands and sobbed. The next second, she felt a harsh blow on the back of her neck and heard her new mistress scold. Stop that crying girl. Now sit up and be quiet. Yes, missus, Harriet whispered. Tears still trickled down her face but she didn't make a sound. The sun had set by the time they came to the farm where Harriet was to work. She followed her mistress into the cooking shed next to the house. Here's your supper, said Mrs. Cook. She handed Harriet a piece of cornbread from a pan next to the fireplace. That's where you sleep, over there by the fire. She frowned at Harriet. There's no laziness here. Be ready to work first thing in the morning. Mrs. Cook turned and went out, leaving Harriet alone in the small dark shed. Harriet looked down at the cornbread in her hand. She couldn't eat. She curled up in the smoky corner with only her thin shirt for a blanket and she cried herself to sleep. Early the next morning, Harriet began to work for Mrs. Cook. She was to help her mistress make cloth Here's where you stand, Harriet, and here is the yarn, Mrs. Mrs. Cook spoke in a cross voice. Now you pull carefully and wind the yarn like this. 
Harriet watched her mistress and tried to wind the yarn just right. Like this, missus? Carefully, or you'll break it. Do this right, or I'll take the whip to you. Now you stand there and keep working. Harriet stood for hours and hours, winding the yarn and sneezing from the dust in the air. Every day she worked in the dusty room, and every night she slept close to the fire to keep warm. She often dreamed th that she was back home, outside in the fresh, clean air, running through the woods while Daddy Ben cut down trees for Mr. Brodus. But her mistress kept her inside, day after day, cleaning and winding the yarn and choking on the fuzzy dust. Then Harriet came down with the measles. Mrs. Cook sent her straight back to Mr. Brodus, and Mr. Brodus took her to her parents' cabin. That night, Mama Ritt hugged her daughter tight and rocked her gently, while Daddy Ben smoothed Harriet's ragged blanket out on the dirt floor where all the children slept. It was dark inside the windowless log cabin. The only light came from a large fireplace, which took up most of one wall. Harriet slowly looked around the cabin, thinking how happy she was to be back home. The battered chairs leaned crookedly against the wall. The two iron pots hung by the fire. Yes, it's still the same, Harriet thought as she fell asleep. In the morning, Harriet's family was up and at work before the sun rose. Harriet stayed in the cabin alone by the fire, and Rit slipped away from her work at the master's big house as often as she could to care for her little girl. When Harriet was well enough to leave the cabin, she found a sunny place outside to sit and watch the other children as they ran and played. Her back itched under her scratchy shirt, but the soft, warm dust felt good to her bare toes. Out beyond the slave quarters, Harriet could see fields stretching away into the distance. Somewhere out there, Daddy Ben was working. Somewhere farther, she knew there was a lazy river winding its way through the woods. Harriet laughed out loud with happiness. Oh, Lord, she said, thank you for bringing me home. Harriet's master let her stay with her mother and father for a little while. Then, when she was seven, he rented her out again. Mama Rick cried, but could do nothing. Harriet and her parents stood outside their cabin as her new master drove up. Harriet held tightly to Daddy Ben's hand. I remember our other daughter, our other little girls, Daddy Ben said quietly. They were carrying water out to the fields, just trying to help, and Master put them in the slave gang going south. Daddy Ben bent down to hug Harriet. Just took our two little ones. We couldn't even say goodbye. Then it was time for Harriet to go. As the wagon jolted and bumped down the road, Harriet looked back at her mother and father, standing together by the cabin. Again, she wondered if this was the last time she would ever see them. This time, Harriet was put to work in a large plantation house. She scrubbed and dusted and cleaned. She worked all day long without time to rest or play, and the nights were worse. At night, she had to look after the mistress's new baby. I don't ever want to hear the baby cry, said her mistress, Miss Susan. You see this whip? You'll feel it if you let that baby wake up and cry. Harriet struggled to keep her eyes open while she rocked the cradle all night, every night. Sometimes Harriet fell asleep and the baby cried. Then Harriet was whipped. Sometimes she didn't clean the house well enough to please Miss Susan. Then she was whipped again. Harriet's back and neck and legs were always sore from the stinging rawhide. Mrs. I'm doing the best I can, Harriet cried. Please, missus, don't whip me. But Miss Susan didn't care that Harriet was only a little girl. One day, Harriet couldn't stand the whippings anymore, and she ran away. She ran as far as she could, and when she saw a large pig pen, she crawled under the fence and huddled in the corner. A huge mother pig with eight baby pigs glared at her, but Harriet was too tired to be frightened. She stayed with the pigs for a few days and ate the scraps of food they left in the mud but at last she became so hungry that she had to go back to her mistress. You lazy, no good, screamed Miss Susan as she got out the whip. You're not worth the money I'm paying for you. She took Harriet back to Mr. Brodus. This girl will never be any good as a house slave, Miss Susan told him angrily. 
You should make her work in the fields. Harriet was overjoyed to be out of Miss Susan's house, but her mother was worried. Child, she said, stirring a pot of cornmeal mush over the fire. Don't you know you have to please those folks? They can do anything they want with you. You'd be better off working in the master's big house than out in the fields. It takes a strong man to do field work, Harriet, and you're just a little girl. But Harriet's master did send her out to the fields. She learned how to plow the ground, hoe the weeds, chop the wood, load the wagons, and care, uh, and take care of the mules. She also learned to obey the overseer, the man who made sure the slaves did not stop working. He had a long, terrible whip that cut into the back of any slave who didn't work fast enough. So Harriet tried to work as fast as the grown-up slaves.